So part of the Joe Biden's spending plan is increasing food stamps. Food stamps have increased. This article came out on the 16th, and this is the Biden administration announces the biggest increase in food stamps ever. Starting in October, food assistance benefits will increase, will increase by an average of 25% over pre-pandemic levels. And of course, for a lot of people who have realized all of this spending is going to lead to inflation, you often hear of Powell talking about, you know, the inflation is, is transitory, meaning that it's not going to be here for a long time. What they refer to as a long time is going to be left up to the history books. We'll see whether it's 10 years, whether it's 20 years or longer that Americans will experience basically stagflation, high unemployment coupled with high inflation. And so we see a large number of these individuals who already are on just the one social program that we're talking about. In a previous video, I talked about how over 75% of all government spending goes to social programs. It just basically goes to some form of welfare. And basically, at the end of the day, all this means is that the government is, in, is in essence, devaluing your labor. So if you're somebody who puts in a lot of labor, especially if you're a skilled individual, the government, in essence, gives these people hours of labor for free. And so while you're out there toiling and actually utilizing your body, utilizing your skills, for the benefit of your society and then you going out into the economy and then picking the things that you need now that you have contributed to said economy the government in essence gives these things away devaluing your labor and of course the labor is just a representative of what they give you which is basically dollars it says the average benefit which was 121 before the pandemic it says will increase by 36 dollars a month under the new policy and how many americans are on this social program it says the biden administration approved on monday the biggest boost to food assistance benefits in the history of supplemental nutrition assistance program which is basically snap this is a reform that could impact as many as 42 million americans i think there are only like 125 some odd million americans that are actually in some way, shape, or form contributing to the labor market. And 42 million Americans out of the 320 or 330 million Americans that live in the country, it says here 42 million of them receive some sort of benefit. Now we're just going to talk about just the increase. So the increase was $36, right? A month, right? This is $36 a month times. What did the article say? 42 million, 42 million Americans. And so in essence, every single month, the government is going to give away an additional 1.5 billion in dollars. Now, if you were to, if you were to take this, and this is every month. Now, of course, if you were to transfer this, let's say, into labor, most people complain about, you know, the average, uh, you know, the minimum wage needs to be $15 an hour, right? So let's just divide that by 15 right so we'll turn that into labor hours how many labor hours is the government giving away almost a hundred over a hundred million hours of labor every single month the government is just giving to people in the form of free spending and who's going to pay for those hundred million hours well you are you are if you're a hard-working individual every time you know, you work for a corporation every time you look at your check and you see all these different taxes. This is where one of them are over a hundred million hours every single month. And that's if you were just to say, well, let's just take the, the, the minimum wage and let's just say it was seven dollars an hour. I mean, if it was a uh, fifteen dollars an hour, that means the government is literally giving many of these people over a hundred million hours of labor every single month. For free now who are who are the ones that are represented primarily by these individuals right overwhelmingly 
It's single mothers. And you can see by the graph here, distribution of food stamp recipients, status of children living with single mothers in the United States in 2019 by marital status. And overwhelming, as you can see right here, receiving food stamps, overwhelmingly, the vast majority of them are women who are either never married, separated, or divorced. Overwhelmingly, these are all single mothers because the vast majority of children belong to single mothers. It's like 90%. Many of these individuals are either separated who are, are individuals who are never married. A big portion of these women are just single women. These are the, the pump and dumps, the ones who got pregnant. They're out there, you know, living the life. I don't need no man. They get themselves pregnant and overwhelmingly they end up on the public dole. And for those who were divorced, it says about 50% of marriages in the United States end in divorce. Of those divorces, about 80% of them are initiated by women so when we look at the statistics here that talk about those who are divorced about 1200 of the women who are now single mothers who are receiving welfare are basically women who have chosen to walk away from their marriages and so of that 1200 80 percent of those women who initiate who who were divorced they were the ones who initiated divorce from their husbands and so overwhelmingly the people who are recipients of uh, said welfare are overwhelmingly in america single mothers now, of course there's a new bill here also talking about more free money new bill aims to abolish tax penalties against who single parents now, of course they refer to them as single parents but overwhelmingly these are single women because single mothers make up the vast majority of single parents it's very rare to find a single parent who is a male that has custody of the children. It's like 90% or over 90% of all custody battles end up with uh, women having either sole custody and, is, and of course it's very rare for men to have dual custody. But overwhelmingly the women are the ones who have control of the children and of course as a result they are the ones who benefit from this child tax credit. And basically what this means is that the government will send you a check for roughly about 300 month now of course this is according to uh the center for budget and policy priorities right this is americans especially women benefit hugely from things like social security so basically what the article says here it says women compromise more than half of social security beneficiaries in their late 60s and seven in ten beneficiaries in their 90s and you can see the graph down here women age 60 to 69 women age 70 to 79 etc and you can see the percentages of benefit of social security beneficiaries right here in this graph and so later on uh, the article also goes to says this is women's reliance on social security increases over time why? Because women are poor money managers, especially when there is not a man in the home. This is especially as they outlive spouses and savings. In 2014, 65% of women aged 80 received at least half of their family income from Social Security compared to 45% of women aged 65 to 69. Women also benefit from Social Security uh, progressive benefit form, uh, formula because they tend to have lower earnings, right? And so for a lot of these people who are like, oh, you know, the women, we're out here doing it, right? We're doing all the things. Well, the studies show that that is not the case. And so unfortunately, with time moving forward, this is more of what you will see. When you look at the wealthy and you hear all these individuals, you know, the wealthy do everything that they can to limit the government from stealing in essence stealing their money taxation is theft and so for many of these wealthy individuals who go out there and they earn a hard living i mean could you imagine going out there and ha having a business or having such a high skill that you go out there and you earn a million dollars you earn two million dollars and the government literally extracts 50 percent of your labor just to give to these individuals so that they can buy votes and the normies go out there and they complain, you know, that the, you know, the, the rich need to pay their fair share. And I completely understand it. And it's because literally these individuals are having their labor stolen from them. And it's no wonder that many of these wealthy individuals, when the government starts to overly tax them, they leave the country that they're in. That they in. They take their wealth with them. They take their business with them. They take a, their high value skills. And what happens in those countries? They end up impoverished. They end up 
socialists, they end up uh, communists, and the people starve. And it's because you have too many people that just don't want to contribute enough to society, or they or they're unskilled. Many of these women should be attached to husbands, but because politicians want to buy votes, they encourage these women to go out there and be single. They go out there and live single lives, they get pregnant, the men don't want to stay with them because they're toxic. And the result is that they end up in an, in an impoverished state and the country goes the way of socialism. And the end result of socialism is always communism.